Let's do it. Yeah, boy. All right. Welcome, Christian, to The Young Athletic. Thanks for being here. How are you you doing? Doing great. Thank you for having me. So I see you brought me some uh, nice little swag here. What'd you get for me? Yeah. So, you know, we got a couple flyers, a couple business cards, a couple decal stickers, big one, a couple small ones, and then our classic little oval sticker. Um, Yeah. We always like to, you know, stoke out the people we work with and the kids we work with and let them walk away with something so they can remember it. So you are the owner of Ventura Mecos, right? Ventura Mecos Surf Club or Surf Camp? What surf is it? Camp, yeah. Surf Camp. Yeah, so we're uh, yeah we're Ventura Mecos Surf Camp, uh-huh. and uh, we're located here in Ventura and spread all the way from Oxnard all the way up to uh, northern Ventura County line. So uh, yeah, we pretty much touch base in all the communities along the coast and stuck to work with the local kids and uh, and adults. Yeah. So uh, yeah. We work with all ages, all ages. I can ask you to get a little closer. Yeah. You can just bring the mic closer to you. Got it. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. So adults as well? Yeah. So um, I always like to tell everyone that uh, because they're like, oh, you know, I'm too old. You know, I'm like, it's too late. I always tell everyone it's never too late because I've actually gotten an 84-year-old woman out there before for her birthday. Wow. Never stepped foot on a surfboard before. I think it was her third time in the ocean ever. And uh, but her sister moved to California and became an avid surfer. So she said it was on her bucket list. She wanted to try to make it happen for her birthday. And so we got her out there and, you know, and got her up on the board. She was screaming, hooting, hollering, <laughs> even threw a shock up. So, um, yeah. yeah, you know, I like to just tell everyone and refer to that experience because it really is never too late. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So her 80, 84th birthday? Yeah, it was her 84th birthday. I mean, imagine that, getting out there on 84, you know. And, and she was getting after it, you know. Blasted the whole 90-minute session, too. Some yeah. people tap out. I've had, like, triathletes come in, and they're tapping out within 30, 40 minutes. Because it's a complete different um, workout than what you're used to, you know. Yeah. And you don't really anticipate getting a workout when you're heading into it. You're kind of just like, oh, oh no, I'm, I'm going to have fun, you know. I'm going to be splashing in the water and... Yeah, I uh, I had I'm, I had a surfboard as a kid, and I went out as a couple a couple times, mm-hmm. and I just remember like it's an arm workout, definitely. you know? It's like definitely I boogie board because yeah. it's like the best of both worlds. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you get the rush of the wave pushing yep. you, yeah, but without all the paddling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, you're getting everything. I mean, you're, you know, you're constantly paddling to get out to the wave, right? Right. And then even when you're sitting, you know, you're kind of treading water lightly when you're sitting on the board to kind of maneuver around and stuff. Yeah. And then even when you're popping up, you're doing a push up, mm-hmm. right? And then when you're standing, you're like kind of bent knees, you're in a squat stance. Yeah. So you're getting like a full, you know, full workout in every aspect of the body that really just keeps you, you know, going. And, and that's like honestly all I do. I just pretty much surf and skateboard, and I've been staying in shape since I've been a young teen. You yeah, know? I mean, you don't see a lot of overweight surfers. You really don't. You know, <laughs> yeah, at least the avid ones. It's yeah. like you, they have a passion, and you develop this, you know, this pure addiction mm-hmm. um, that you know you really want to just get out there and get after it, get after it. It's like you know, never can catch too many waves. Almost. When kind of thing. when did you get hooked surfing? So I started when I was probably, you know, nine, 10 like, years old or so. And um, probably around 10, 11 years old is when it really started to click. Are you from, from here, from the area? Yeah, from Ventura County. Okay. Uh, was uh, raised up the hill a little bit and moved out to Ventura right when I got out of high school, pretty much. Um, my mom grew up on the avenue. I mm-hmm. um, have a lot of history here in Ventura. Same thing with my dad. He was a, uh, his father, my grandfather was local farmers at Camarillo, running the Camarillo farm fields back in the day and stuff. So, yeah, um, yeah I have a lot of roots here in Ventura, you know, in the 805, and I'm really proud of that. And finally got settled here with my family. I, you know, I'm married, have two beautiful daughters, and so I have an eight year old and have a three month old. And yeah, so really stoked, you know, just get settled here and really just be feel at home you know where where we've been for a long time so yeah we're stoked and i'm sure you've been teaching your daughters how to serve of course yeah, yeah. so yeah my eight-year-old she's you know it's funny i, I work with kids all the time right? right and i've i've learned that pretty much whatever your profession is your kids are not going to care about it at all <laughs> And so, you know, you look at some, you know, you're, you know, you work with soccer kids. You could have a professional soccer player, you know, that 
wants his kid to be the next soccer athlete and soccer mm-hmm. star. And most of the time, they're just like, eh, you know, that's mm-hmm. all right. Sometimes, you know, kid, kids will pursue their dream and all that. But I've seen a big trend of that, a really big trend of that, you know, and seeing like some of the kids just being like, oh, you know, like eh, my dad does it. I'm just going to come to it. But hopefully soon enough, she'll get that fire lit up, you know. So, so how did, how did, what, who inspired you to surf then? Uh, my father. Okay. Yeah. So my father inspired me and, you know, he got me out there when I was super young and I was surfing, you know, probably like seven, eight years old on a boogie board, just messing yeah. around at the beach when we we're going there. And, and um, yeah, eventually, you know, graduate up to a surfboard, just one of his old boards kind of thing from the rafters. And, yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, and eventually, you know, just kind of stuck with, with it and got really fired up and, and then got picked up by, you know, a couple of local surf shops up in my neighborhood, like Revolution Surf Shop. And, um yeah and then just got planted in here and started mingling with the scene and when you say picked up do you mean like sponsored yeah yeah so i got sponsored like yeah out of like mid high school i think and okay you know what, that's what like, is, yeah what do they give you what are they, they, yeah, they just, you, they no they don't you pay beer. you i wish yeah, yeah they pretty much just hook you up with you know discounts and a couple free shirts here there a couple free hoodies you know free stickers on your board and yeah, yeah. they kind of just want you to rep the brand right i i skateboarded and rollerblade when I was a kid, so okay, you know, yeah. People are always talking about getting sponsored. Yeah, at the yeah, skate park. It's yeah. Kind of similar. It's you know, it's every like young kid's dream. Like, like, oh man, if I can make it, if I can get you know sponsored by so and so and get yeah. a sticker on my board or ride their deck or their board and and then, like it's funny. I you know, I even the kids nowadays that I work with, you know, like probably over half of them are like, I want to be a pro surfer when I grow up. And yeah. So it's cool to see that dream. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm all about fueling that fire and feeding that stoke. So I I never got sponsored, but you were one of the people that did get sponsored. How was that? Uh, I mean, just lo- like local mom yeah. pa shops, you know. But I mean, Revolution kind of had a good little run, like when we were doing it. And I remember like some of the elite team rider guys, like they had, like went and won some crazy championship, like on the East Coast or something, and they were the best surf shop in the nation, kind of thing. So yeah. that was super cool, you know. And then, um, but yeah, it wasn't anything too big. And I got I worked with a couple of local surf shapers, you know, and and got some you know experience with that so really got dialed in with just like how a surfboard was made and the mechanics of it and all that kind of stuff so did they used to make surfboards in surf shops you know it just kind of depends it just i mean the og spots i think back you know in like the 60s and 70s yeah, yeah. it's like there was like a little shop and probably a shaping bay and a room like this you know with a bunch of foam dust everywhere right and like i've seen that movie lords of Dogtown. yeah sure. every, exactly that's like an all-time classic yeah, you know yeah. and everyone and that's like one of the ones <laughs> that kicked me off you know and got my whole interest going um but yeah it's like you know you see movies like that and very classic scenery where it's like you know they're right there working in it um nowadays like um, you know, it's a little bit more few and far between that you see that happening. Um, some of them are just pure surf shops, you know, they just have merchandise and surfboards to sell and don't yeah. have like somebody shaping out back. Um, but I know Ventura Surf Shop, they're right down the street from here. Um, probably a Ventura's longest standing surf shop and uh, love them as well. And uh, yeah, Blinky um, Hubini, he's, he's a legendary shaper for William Dennis Surfboards, his brand. Yeah. And uh, he, he shapes right there. Uh, he'll shape right there and he'll show off some boards to all of his local team riders and they do like a lot of great content and so yeah he's it's he's a legend in the community definitely blinky he, yeah blinky he actually just got inducted into the surfboard hall of fame wow. um yeah so the surfing hall of fame yeah so he's he's definitely what you would classify as a legend now for yeah. sure <laughs> where where is the surfing hall of fame is it here in california i don't know i'm sure it is i'm sure it's down south like somewhere in like uh yeah san diego san or orange diego. county or something yeah. like that yeah like that encinitas area or something like that san clemente um i know we have like you know a little tiny museum like i like i think at the visitor center there's like a little section for it like a little part of surfing history yeah. um but um but yeah you know it's like it's cool just to, you know have some really local like big local figures from in the surf industry just in our neighborhood um, I mean, just from, I mean, Robert's surfboards to, you know, Blinky with William Dennis to, you know, Proctor's surfboards. We have Channel Islands. All these different brands are like worldwide known. Really? And uh, we're, they're kind of right here in the 805. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. How many how many surf shops do we have? Oh, geez. Pro- uh, at least in, I mean, Ventura, probably at least like five or six. Really? Yeah. And then Oxnard, probably another four or five. And Really? I've yeah. never, I've never even... 
you don't see him driving by, I feel like. Yeah, I mean, you Maybe just got to keep your eye open, you know? Yeah, yeah, like Revolution's literally right on the other corner from you right here. Okay. Right across from Spencer McKenzie's and um, where all that urban cafe craziness is going on, right on uh, Thompson there. Yeah, a uh, couple back-to-back ones right there on Ventura Surf Shop and Wavefront, right there on Main Street. Um I think there's even a new one, like right there in the corner next to Tony's Pizza. So, so there are a good number of surf shops. There's a good number. Yeah. You know, it's it's surfing. It's gotten popular. You know, and um, it's always been something that has grabbed people's attention. And I think during the pandemic, that's when things really took a turn. And because you know everyone went from full lockdown mode to okay, now we have access outside, but we have to keep our distance, right? And now, like, what can our kids do? What can we do that's safe? And, you know, everyone started riding bikes, right? Like, bikes took, like, was the biggest thing ever, right? Yeah. And the next thing you know, it was like, oh, surfing. So oh, yeah, like, we oh, have the beach. <laughs> we have the beach. Oh, I can go surfing. I can go talk to people and I can be in the water, you know? I can be outside in the sun, you know, mm-hmm. which was, like, highly recommended. Right. And, you know, I'm, feel, I'm, I'm in a controlled atmosphere because I can regulate my distance, right? And um, so people really started getting triggered on the surfing. And then... And then there was like a crazy demand of it that everyone sold out of everything. Right, right, right. And then that's when we had the whole Long Beach cargo freighter thing where things weren't able to get in, right? Right, right. So the whole trickle effect, domino effect of all that, you know, everything going behind the scenes really affected even that. So, you know, everyone was just like wanting to surf, and, but they couldn't find a board. So would you say like mid-teens, 2015 or something, surfing had sort of become less popular and then it became popular again? You know, I wouldn't say it became less popular. I think it's been on a slow rise, you know. Um, I think coming out of the 80s, going into the 90s, it was just, you know, at a plateau, figuring out how to tap into the industry a little bit more with their branding and marketing. Right. And then, you know, too late, like early 2000s, it kind of just like almost dying. Right. Um, and then because like, you know, magazines started to fall off, right? We lost all the magazine labels right so i mean there's like a lot of brands that started first the surf industry kind of falling off the map and everyone's watching you know these social media videos that are coming out and so social media really took a change on the whole surfing aspect because you went from growing up watching a 40 minute surf movie you know of your three or four favorite surfers on a surf trip and you're just playing that on the vhs tape on the dvd over and over with your buddies and your boys or, you know, the magazine came out and you saw what happened in that contest, like back in the day. Like, that's mm-hmm. how you found out. Whereas now it's like instantaneous. So you have all this instant feed and instant pleasure of this content where it kind of changed the game in the playing field for the surf industry. So, uh, yeah, I would say it kind of early 2000s, it kind of kind of trickled off a little bit and then really started to ramp back up once the, everyone figured out the social media game okay. and like the, you know, the new content game and all that kind of stuff and shorter edits, you know, for shorter attention span, you know, because that's yeah. what we're all getting at now. And um, yeah, and then once they, you know, started tapping into becoming more professional athletes rather than just, um, you know, local beach rat and party scene kind of thing that's when it really took the turn. And I think that's when, you know, the Olympic committee started getting involved with having attention on it. And then next thing you know, two years, I think it was two or three years ago, surfing was in the Olympics for the first time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it debuted. And then even before that, I think like two or three years before that, um, surfing became California's official state sport. No way. Yeah. I didn't so, know that. Yeah. And I don't know if it's been updated since then, but I'm pretty what, sure. What year yeah. was that? I, I can't remember what year, but I want to say it was three or four years ago. Yeah. The official sport of yeah. California. Yeah. It was the official state sport. I mean, it's yeah. pretty cool. I'm not going to lie. Surfing right? is a really cool sport. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> you know, seeing that happen, you know, seeing, you know, it become in the Olympics and now what's called the WSL, which is the professional surf tour. Um, that's, you know, that's really as professional and top quality as it get, you know, it's, it's, it's up there, you know, it's definitely up there with, you know, I would say almost like the MLB and stuff like that, where people are really grabbing attention to it. Do they have uh, like events, like, like a competition, like a pro competition here? Yeah. Yeah. So the world tour kind of spreads throughout the entire world. I mean, they, you know, they'll have a contest in Tahiti, you know, they'll have a contest in South Africa. They'll have a contest in Australia um, and, you know, Hawaii. And so they have all these different venues that these surfers of the best surfers of the world are getting a chance to perform at. 
and um, it's really entertaining. You know, yeah. it's really amazing to see the quality of surfing that you're watching and just what they end up surfing in. And, you know, men and women, you know, the women have to surf in the same kind of stuff as the men, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's really cool to see. <laughs> they don't you know, change the course. <laughs> no, no. And back in the day, I feel like they might have. I think they did have, like, different venues, like gnarly, oh, okay. gnarly spots for the girls. And yeah, yeah. But now it's, like, completely equal. Yeah, I mean, it's, And, you know, it's really cool it's because the, the women are charging nowadays. And yeah. they've earned so much respect in the surf industry and the surf culture. And, um, you know, really, really stoked on that and really proud of that. So, yeah, I mean, the WSL, they, they spread their tour across the world. And what's really cool about them is that they, um, they finished their championship event where they crown the winner, the best surfer of the world, right here down the street from us in San Clemente. Really? So, I mean, I mean, not too down for the street, but close you know, enough, close enough <laughs> yeah. for most people, you know, we yeah, can yeah. drive, you know, two and a half hours, three That's hours typical. to the best event like that's being able to go to the super bowl for free yeah yeah you know imagine being able to have you know access to the super bowl or the world series for free is that you'd be there in a second every year is it's in san Clemente? at least right now for the last i think like three years or so two or three years what what time of year is that one though um it's in september okay yeah and I've made it like an annual tradition now. So I've been yeah, like, yeah. you know, religiously going to that because I'm like, I can't believe they don't charge. You oh, know, they don't, they don't even. No, you just get there and it's kind of first come, first serve. You find your spot in the beach. And if you get there early and claim your turf, you, you're you stoked, you know. I went to a, a surf competition a few months ago at Rincon. Oh, nice. I don't know yeah. what it was called. Yeah. Or maybe you're aware of it, but it was like, yeah. you know, kids. All okay. the folks, yeah, men, yeah, yeah. women, and you just like go down to the water, go down to the beach, and mm -hmm. sit, and yeah, you got some vendors, and I think I yeah. think they were just giving away all their you know their food yeah. and their drinks, yeah. and it was it was one of the coolest things I've done in California. Nice, know? nice. Go yeah. to a surf competition. It's it's so awesome. You know, I I actually just hosted our own little Ventura Makos uh, surf contest this last weekend for our local kids here in the community. Oh. And, um, you know, it's no cost. It's nothing. I don't charge anything. And we supply all the food for the day and music and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. And I have staff work in it. And, um, you know, it it's just such a fun time and, you know, good way to get everyone together and have a great time and watch all the kids perform together and be stoked and a good atmosphere. And, you know, just like you're saying, it's a good vibe kind of scene, you know, and you're kind of just, you feel welcome, you know, and, and you could even be just a spectator and just hanging out, not even competing and still mm -hmm. having a great time, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, contests are always fun and the kids, you know, they love it because it just, it just creates memories, you know, and that's kind of what I'm about is, just creating memories that, you know, last a lifetime. Cause I remember being a kid, you remember being a kid and I can't even really remember the defining moment. I won all my games, you know, and we had the winning goal, mm -hmm. but I remember all those, you know, hotel room trips with the boys, yeah. you know, and yeah, the, the bus rides, you know, yeah. where we did that, like, you know, whatever prank or whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you kind of have all these like little things that, you know, really make a difference in these kids as they grow up and, and just, you know, keeping them on the right path, you know, making sure that they're not getting in too much trouble or mm -hmm. too much mischief, you know, because it's way too easy these days, you know. It so, is too easy. Gotta yeah. keep them occupied. For sure, you yeah. know, and I like, you know, anytime I see kids on the phone, I'm just like, put that thing away, you know. <laughs> Unless yeah. they're taking a video, like, to, like, capture the moment oh, or yeah. to, like, a picture, like, I'm all about that. But, like, you know, just doing this you know when you're like hey, yeah. with all your buddies i'm like no put that away let's be like in the moment you know yeah. let's enjoy this yeah. so well, I, fortunately i don't think we have like kids don't really br i mean they bring their phone to practice but yeah they don't ever have a chance to use them yeah know? there's not yeah. a lot of waiting around you know true we're, we're yeah running, so totally yeah. yeah yeah it's like you know yeah for a contest you know you surf a 15 minute heat that's a typical round that you would surf as an individual and then you may not surf for you know two hours three hours and yeah. you have to wait for your next heat you know and so there's that downtime where you know you got to regulate still yeah, yeah so yeah it's it's always you know a fine fine juggle to take but it's always good just to you know keep the kids connected for sure did you ever uh 
uh, surf any contests? Won any contests? Yeah, yeah, I've won a couple like uh, just local events. I've never done any big league stuff, you know. Um, yeah. I, I always laugh, you know, because everyone's like, "Oh, were you like an ex pro surfer?" Um, no. And I like to tell everyone I'm more of like a professional stoke therapist. I like to say, oh, yeah. so I just like to stoke people out, and I definitely have a lot of education on surfing, you know, and have mm-hmm. a fast like experience of it. I've been mm-hmm. surfing since I was you know 10, 11 years old, and in these waters and know them like the back of my hand. Um, so I have a lot to offer and educate for sure. Um, but yeah, I just like to have like the fun with the local stuff. But uh, but yeah, I could definitely could say the Surf Rodeo has been one of my f- my highlight ones that I've taken the title where. What's, what's that, what's the Surf Rodeo? So yeah, the Surf Rodeos are like one of our, you know, local community events here in Ventura and pretty much all the local guys and all the local crew, they, um, they host it and put on a rad event. It's usually, it used to be um, in Pierpont back in the day. So on, you know, Seaward Boulevard, they would just take over. And like the whole street was shut down, the whole beach was shut down pretty much. It was one massive party with a rad surf contest. You have to wear a cowboy hat, you know, with the jersey. And, you know, it gets pretty wild and crazy. But all the local pros are out there. All the legend shapers are the ones that shape the boards for the event. And you're not allowed to surf your own surfboard. You have to surf one of their boards. Um, so it's pretty cool, you know, and it kind of shows, you know, who can has the most style just in general because you're not surfing your own equipment. Um, so, yeah, I, I had that one where I won like, a three-year span in a row right before they kind of shut down during COVID and all that. So that was my like three P champion. Three P champ. I was like, boom, (laughs) hang it up right there. I got my jackets right there shining. So yeah. So that was definitely a fun one to take. And um, a couple other local contests I've done pretty well in, but yeah, nothing too crazy. Surf rodeo champion. What (laughs) you, what do you, you got a jacket? You got a, a yeah, that's, that's the cool thing is like, they kind of get like a bonus. It's like, you get hooked up whenever you win a surf contest they usually have a bunch of goodies right it's like oh here's a surfboard bag a skateboard some you know hatch sweatshirt whatever and then um and then you'll get like a trophy for the surf rodeo and then the best thing is a jacket so each winner of each division receives their own like special handcrafted jacket and um and that's like the coolest thing because it's all you know decked out with glitter and things that are pinned on and sewed on and it's just like very unique right one of a kind where you can't really find that anywhere kind of style so um so yeah and i think like i think almost two or all three jackets um my cousin down in pierpont um amber newman she's she actually was the one that made them Mm. so yeah she helps out with the whole local scene you know and helps make the jackets for the events and when i won she was like you want my jacket (laughs) and i was like it was meant to be (laughs) so yeah it was pretty special and sentimental moment for sure wow is there any prize money for these kind of events um i wish i i don't think the pro division has any prize money i think maybe one year there was um it's more of just like really seeing like top quality surfers come to that event. I mean, I mean, we've had like some of our local, you know, top guys like our, you know, Dane Reynolds, who's a massive figure here in the 805 community. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, Aton Osborne is a massive up and comer. That was, you know, young kid turning into a rad teen. Now he's like a young man just killing the game. Mm-hmm. Um, Mickey Clark is best friend. Uh, Josiah Mika, a lot of just, you know, Matt, uh, the McCabe's, I can go on, you know, they, there's a lot of heavy hitters that have been, you know, involved with that surf rodeo that just make it really cool for the kids to see too, because it's world-class talent going out. Um, Are they from the eight to five or just from California? Yeah. Born and raised right here in the hood. Yeah. Okay. So like right there down the street. So it's cool to like, they, they rep it, you know, and they hold it down and, and the community respects it, you know, very heavily. So it's uh, really cool to support, you know, and they just opened up, most of the crew just opened up a, a new surf shop right down the street called uh, Chapter 11 Surf Shop. Uh, so you should go check it out if you haven't been there. But, um, but yeah, they're like a rad little, you know, surf niche right now. That's in my opinion, you know, pretty much my, my favorite thing to watch in the surf industry and all that content stuff. So yeah, super cool. But I mean, back in the day, I, I remember seeing classic pictures of like, I mean, I'm I'm sure you might have heard of the surfer before Kelly Slater. Yeah, Is that of course. Rebel? Kelly yeah. Slater, yeah. So, like, Kelly Slater has even been in the surf rodeo before. Mm. So, you have, like, random pros just kind of popping their head into this vent. And um, it's just, you know, 
kids to see that kind of talent come through it's just mm -hmm. what you know you're freaking out and tripping out so yeah it's uh you know it's always cool to see that and yeah i, I think unfortunately this year the surf rodeo is on a pause because i believe the x games are officially oh yeah happening someone told me about that here in ventura we're getting the x um, games yeah so That's x awesome. games yeah i i can't believe that it was officially approved this uh this week by the city so we're, we're maybe at the fairgrounds yeah right there at the fairgrounds and i mean they have the space for it it's just you know it's gonna be interesting to see this whole downtown scene when all that's yeah. going on and all the cluster but it's gonna be exciting you know because yeah. i've grown up watching the x games and now it's right down the street in my neighborhood so i'll yeah. for sure be there that's for sure totally yeah that's fun the x games yeah do you know when it is um i yeah i think it's june 21st to the 23rd or something like that okay mid to late june yeah be sure to not schedule a soccer tournament there definitely not <laughs> a soccer watch, tournament yeah yeah i mean as a kid you know we watched x games we're at the skate park for sure it. it's like yeah can we get to the x games that's where and... everyone watched tony hawk land the 900 for the yeah. first time you know i remember watching that like as like up at night as a little kid and just screaming at the top of my lungs. Did you, you watch know? it live? Oh yeah, for oh, sure. Yeah, I missed that. I was a huge skater. I was actually a huge skater before I was a surfer. Like oh, yeah. I thought I was gonna go pro skateboarding and I got into like Thrasher magazine when I was younger and was you like, like your photo in Thrasher. Yeah, I was all pumped. I got like a half page spread or whatever, a little corner what? spread and I was like and so what happened i don't know i just kind of you know kept breaking bones and then oh, yeah. i swear like lords of dog town like that hollywood version came out i always knew the old one like the documentary style but yeah. the the hollywood version came out and i was probably like 14 or so like 13 14 and i was like oh, okay like i can surf and skate and like i can ride bigger wheel skateboards not like these small ones you know and so i kind of transitioned to like this flowy surf style you know just like all the dogtown boys rather than this progressive vert oh, and flip I trick see. scene and then fully went into dope surfing you know just dove head first so it was just it. an accident really you know it's like i was like into it my dad was always like come on let's go surf let's go surf and because my dad would wake up you know and leave early at like 5 a.m and come back to like 9 10 you know i'm like where'd you go he's like you should have came and i'm like yeah, that's well, surf, where are you going that's like surf schedule is too early it's gnarly you know you, like I, we, <laughs> we're committed when it's good and and so like it was funny like he saw my my passion for skating when i was younger and I ended up just dom patrolling and doing skate park sessions. So, you know, I mean, probably shouldn't say this, but I mean, we were like, you know, just getting early to skate parks, hopping the fence and just having it to ourselves. And there's no reason for get, fences to be a skate park. No, absolutely not. And so, you know, we like just, you know, had our little routine where we hit it every other morning and I was getting pretty good, but I get hurt a lot. And yeah, and um, yeah, I was playing water polo a lot and, you know, I was really into that. and surf scene you know was coming in so i think it was just a transition and phase where i was like all right i'm ready for the next one and don't want to keep getting hurt you know and yeah. water was a lot better to fall in than concrete so yeah, yeah. yeah it was a it was a good choice i think <laughs> what what skate park did you skate at um i mean i loved oxnard always grown up skating oxnard skate park i've grown up you know surfing some of the hole in the wall ventura parks you know like west park hobart um pacifica um my dad would always take me to pretty much those ones as some of the go-to's camarillo skate park was a big one that we would hit i lived um, right next to the camarillo skate park. okay yeah That's, so i went all the time yeah so literally would like be at cam skate park like every morning i think that was the first run we pretty much like hit cam first and like and then do a little loop to from oxnard to the ventura parks and then maybe hit cam again on the way back and then all in one day yeah maybe like, like one day and like yeah one morning one and just morning. do like yeah we just do like 45 minutes each one or something and for you know vibing on him one we just hang there and stay and kind of just float around and yeah but he was it was rad my dad took me in a lot of different parks he gave me like a lot of opportunity to try a bunch of different stuff and and um experiment with it and yeah i think it was just the the getting hurt factor i was over that <laughs> yeah my my summer routine would be wake up have breakfast and eggs watch i love lucy and then go to the skate park. nice <laughs> i love it i love it and i was at the park all day you know totally yeah, yeah like i didn't like have access to be like right down the street from one or else i'd probably be doing yeah. the same thing i just wake up shovel some food in my mouth and just like all right you know where i'll be all day yeah <laughs> find me at the skate park you know that's great yeah that's that's good stuff for sure so you transition to surfing just naturally though yeah i mean it was you know it's i was always exposed to it you know and then really got influenced by some of my buddies i guess and that movie and 
And then, you know, just the timing of, you know, getting hurt. Because I think I kept, I broke a collarbone. I kept breaking my, like, my toes and my, like, ankle and my wrist. And I was just over it. And then when I was surfing, it was, like, a similar feeling, feeling you know, that I was, like, kind of experiencing. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, yeah, falling in water was just much nicer. And it was just different scenery change, you know. And, yeah, yeah. you know, you're not in just concrete and bars and rails all day, you know. You're kind of, like... Yeah. now in nature and in the water and looking at all these different elements and is the uh surfing culture like i know the skate park culture can be kind of rough sometimes yeah but it, you know it's kind of dirty but it's mm -hmm. there's a whole feeling to it it's like for sure you know, for sure there's definitely like camaraderie there absolutely is it, is it the same kind of thing in the surf in the water of course yeah 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 i mean i yeah you definitely have to you know kind of know your place in the water and there's yeah. some spots that you you know you probably shouldn't paddle out at and at certain times and you can't skip the line definitely you know, you, know, you don't want to be that guy no yeah <laughs> you know you don't just like drop in on someone if you like you know for out of nowhere like you gotta have, kind of wait your turn you know be in position you know yeah. and if there's like a local crew kind of running the scene, you got to give them their distance, you know? And I mean, cause I've been barked at plenty of times and mm -hmm. especially when I was a kid and even growing up and, mm -hmm. you know, and even nowadays I've gone and traveled <laughs> around, I've gotten barked at, you know, and vibed out and I'm like, all right, you know, all right, it's all good. It's all good. And, um, but it's like, you know, you got to just be respectful, you know, just like anything, you got to yeah. walk in with respect and respect, you know, where you are and where you're kind of stand in the pecking order. And, like, you can kind of get an idea in the scene, you know, like, if you're, you know, top of the crop walking in or if you're, you know, youngest one in the game, you know, kind of looking at all the pros kind of thing. So, yeah, it's uh, it definitely, you know, you get to understand that feeling in that atmosphere when you walk in. I think it's a good life lesson, you know, like mm -hmm. it teaches you respect. For sure. You know, sure. like soccer doesn't necessarily teach you that kind of respect. Mm -hmm. You know, you're trying mm -hmm. to beat an opponent. Yeah. Yeah. And at the skate park, it's like, it's a different, it's a different life lesson for sure. It is, you know, I mean, soccer, you know, you're, it's like, cause I played soccer when I was younger too. So I totally know. And I remember like just being all about, you know, wanting to win, 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 right. You're one, that's like your goal. You're just training to win, yeah. you know, where like skateboarding and surfing, like you're not really trying to win for yourself in the moment, you know, you're just yeah. trying to have fun and you want to like just accomplish it's not winning. You're wanting to accomplish something. Yeah. It's like when you're skating and when you're young, you want to learn how to ollie. Yeah. You know, that's like your first thing. And you want to accomplish that. Okay, now I want to learn how to kickflip yeah. or like a 180, you know. Or now I want to learn how to like 50-50 grind. There's something you know? about like the discipline yeah. of learning those things. Absolutely. Because you fail so many times. Yes. And yeah. there are consequences. You fall down. Yeah, you know, of course. On yeah, the concrete. And you know, it's because of your actions. Yeah, you know, and that's what's you know cool about you know skateboarding and surfing and some of these more independent sports. You know, is that you know you it's really just on you, and you have to really come over that mental barrier of what you're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. And you know, and most of the time, it's just a lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. That's really what it comes down to: is how confident you are going into it. If you're timid and you know hesitant going into it you're most likely going to not succeed, <laughs> yeah. you know, but if you're going into it, like oh, I'm, d I'm over falling and I'm going to land it, you yeah. know, third time's a charm. Let's go. Let's go boys. Yeah. Yeah, boy. Hi hype it up. You know, it's like once you fall, you're like, okay, now I can do it. Yeah. All right. I'm done with that. I don't want to do that again. Let's not do that. Yeah. Falling's not good. I don't want to fall. <laughs> <laughs> let's land that dude. Like, let's go after it. So, yeah. and that's what I try to get to at my kids. I'm like, I'll grind them, you know, I'll grind them hard and hard and hard. And, and it's all out of love, you know, it's all out of just periods. I want to see them progress. You know, I'm not trying to deteriorate them by any means, you know, it's just all about trying to get them fired up to realize hey you can do this like let's get it let's get after it how's that how's that going with the kiddos are they like are they taking it well that sort of you know it's like a you got to push them mentally you for know, sure it's their mental growth really absolutely yeah are they are they receptive to that to that yeah you know i think i've i've at least in my opinion come up with some type of recipe that seems to be working right now yeah. um in the kids that i work with you know they we have a very good mutual respect um, cause you know, I never, I never talk down to my kids, you know, I get eye level with them and I like to be like on their level and keep that fine line of like, Hey, like 
we can both be here and like don't cross that respect boundary to where like I have to be that guy that's talking down because right. I don't want to be that guy. I can very easily be that guy, yeah. you know, but I don't want to. So like for me, it's like I just try to keep it real with the kids. It's, it's just keeping it real and being as honest with them as possible, you know, with like a, definitely, you know, motivational, you know, aspects coming in where it's like, hey, you know, that like you blew that section on that wave. But you did this great. You were so close to doing that. And I loved your approach on that, you know? And it's just like, you know, kind of hitting him with what the truth is, but then throwing a lift of encouragement saying, hey, you know, you got this. Let's get back on the track, you know, like, let's do it again. You know, who cares if you fell that time or got sucked over the falls, whatever it is. So, yeah, that's like kind of, you know, some of my tactics that I use with some of my coaching stuff with the kids. And it seems to work. Do you have like a practice with the kids? Like a training session or like are you coaching them? Yeah. Like yeah. is that a weekly like thing? Was yeah. That- so um so yeah, so Ventura Makos, it's like some people are like, Oh yeah, you just run a surf camp and I'm like, Oh, we're a little bit more than a surf camp. We're kind of like we're actually like a legit surf company. Okay. Um we're like a full surf company that, you know, offers a surf training experience from, you know, beginner to advanced almost going into professional level. Um, and you know, so we have, you know, surf camps during the summer that run and then during like other programs during the summer, like advanced camps for, you know, kids that are wanting to compete competitively and really train for contests, surfing and all that. Um, we have travel surf camps, you know, where we load kids up in the van and the, my instructors take them around the whole coast from Malibu to, you know, Santa Barbara and have a great time surfing and skateboarding all day. Um, and then we have, you know, during our school year, um, we for the kids at least we um we offer you know homeschool classes for kids to meet weekly that you know have that free time and come on out for their activity of the week you know and get their physical education in um so we do that for homeschool kids we have elementary programs uh, and then we have what's really popular for here in the community is our middle school surf team and high school surf team um so and i'm the head coach for both of those programs as well um so for, for ventura middle school and yeah and- Buena, is that what it's called? Uh, for Ventura High School. Ventura High School. Yeah, so Ventura High School Surf Team and then Ventura Middle School Surf League um, are both the programs that I operate under Ventura Makos. And um, yeah, we, you know, we get all the local kids here and, you know, the 805 community pretty much. Some kids even are from up the hill a little bit in Ojai and we reach out even to Camarillo sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, but yeah, primarily based here, you know, in Ventura and Oxnard. And, um, and yeah, we like, you know, we train weekly. We meet every week right down the street here at Ventura Point across from the fairgrounds. And uh, we have, you know, multiple levels of different groups for practices. So, you know, I have three different, three to five different practices a week that are running okay. um, every single week. And, um, and then we usually have like a contest a month on the weekend. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's a legit program, you know, and, and it's, it's an investment, you know, that the kids are having to make and they go through the whole trials and tribulations of it because, you know, a lot of people join us coming out of summer season where it's, you know, hot it's warm it's warm water the waves are fun right and then going into winter it all changes yeah it goes from beautiful sunny socal to like well we got some cold weather you know and water temperature just dropped and i gotta throw on some thicker rubber to keep me warm out here and and um it's it gets a little bit more tense and fierce out in the ocean so you get to see these kids go from a transition of comfort into like a full challenging stage right and then coming out of it, going out of, you know, winter into spring, it kind of just eases back into that summer feel right before we end the season. And that's where we're coming right now. So we're just coming out of that harsh winter, you know, and harsh spring that we just had. And, um, and the waves have finally started to get good again. And the kids are all finally getting jazzed back up and they're all mm-hmm. fired up. And, and it's perfect timing because uh, our middle school team actually has our state championships this next weekend mm-hmm. down in Huntington Beach. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll be going down there and competing as, you know, Ventura, weekend? uh, next weekend. next weekend. Yeah. And, um, and we're definitely hopeful to do pretty well, you know, and our high school team surfed, uh, in the state championships, um, last month and we were down in, uh, Oceanside, San Diego yeah. and, uh, our girls longboard actually won the title for wow. the best longboard team for high school division of the state of california congratulations yeah and you're so, the coach yeah so wow. yeah and our boys were runner up you know they were second place in That's the state so which is amazing yeah. yeah 
Um, and we took out some, you know, heavy hitters like, you know, San Clemente and Carlsbad and mm -hmm. San Juanico. Like these are some like heavy, heavy hitters with like, you know, professional kids on their team. And so I was really proud of that and, you know, our kids to hold it down. And, and at least in our local division, Ventura has kind of been the powerhouse for the last like five or six years. Really? Yeah. Like this year we went undefeated for high school and. For middle school, I think we were just one one loss and undefeated for the rest. So, who do you usually compete against? Like those those teams, San Diego and San Clemente. So that's for like more of the state, the whole wide range, and you know I think it spreads all the way from even we've had Santa Cruz teams come down and compete in that. So from Northern California all the way down to you know Southern California. Yeah. Um, and um, and yeah, so we've had uh, those teams compete and surfed against, but at least in our local division. Um, our local division spreads from Los Angeles County to uh, uh, northern Ventura County, lower Santa Barbara County. So, um, so yeah, we compete against, you know, Malibu. We compete against Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. uh, we compete against Westlake. Um, a bunch of different teams that kind of, you know, pop up from down south, Santa Monica. There's a bunch of different ones from the area that I can't really think off the top of my head. But, but yeah, Malibu is always like, you know, kind of that rival. We always have, you know... Mm -hmm. Of, of Malibu events against Ventura, kind of you know. Is there a better clash I guess, in on. Malibu or Ventura? Um, of course, Ventura. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, um, I mean, I'll be eight oh five till I die. But, um, but I mean, I love Malibu. I can't, I can't say I don't. I have a lot of really close friends down there. Mm -hmm. um, I know all the boys that run First Point Malibu, uh, the whole surf rider classic iconic. Uh, point break so, um, and I grew up surfing a lot of those breaks too my dad would take me down there and surf a lot during the summer and hit a lot of those classic spots you know along the, the highway one right there in the pacific coast and mm -hmm. and um, yeah it's it's beautiful down there I can't deny that it's beautiful coast and it's nice to drive the one I'm sure you've taken that drive before yeah. you know um, Cause it's definitely different when you turn into Oxnard, <laughs> you know, coming from highway one into Oxnard when you're like, okay, yeah, this is a little different scenery change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, we, if you go and check out our beaches, they're pretty rad. I mean, we have a lot of beautiful sandy beach breaks. And as we go up into the Northern County, we get some really rad little not rock nooks and point breaks. And I mean, a lot of our surf spots, like some of them are world-class, you know, and people travel around the world to come surf here. So it's uh, pretty cool. Yeah. Very special to be living here. What's the best surf spot in Ventura? Is there, would you give it away if you told me? Definitely could not. Oh. Yeah, definitely could not. But um, <laughs> but what I could say is that, you know, um, we you just got to be at the right place at the right time. Okay. It's just the right time, right place, right time, right window. Yeah. You can, you know, you could be, you know, on it as the, you could be looking at the reports and looking at all the weather channels. You can be, you know, sleeping on the beach, trying to wake up and look at it and make sure you're there. But you just got to get lucky and be there at the right time. Just really score those magic moments. Mm -hmm. And um, everywhere where it's on, when it's on, everywhere is like top quality, 10 oh, out of 10. Okay. In my opinion, like we have some of the most insane spots. I mean, at least the West Coast, it's it's just you have so much diversity here and mm -hmm. it's cool you know our our little 805 has its own little vibe and its own little you know surf culture that holds it down and um and we you know don't like to give too much away and um and it gets like that as you go up north but um but you can get a lot of different variety of surf here which is pretty cool you know so i ride goofy mm -hmm. is it it's like is there a break that sort of i could be front side in you know yeah on this yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like some, I mean, probably the beach breaks, you know, where like we don't have like, I would say a left point where like that would Is that be what like it's called? Uh, a left point break would be like uh, something where, you know, it's a long standing wave that breaks in the same direction along that form of land um, on the beach because yeah. uh, it kind of the waves roll along that point and that land strip. So, you know, here we have we're in the land of like many right points. So like yeah, Raincon yeah. is a right point and the waves come in and they're breaking. It looks like it's breaking left when you're watching a wave, but you got to think about a surfer's perspective perspective when they're surfing the wave. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like if this is, you know, a wave coming in and this is a guy surfing right here, we're thinking he's going left right now, but really he's going right because that's yeah, yeah. the direction he's heading. Right. Yeah. So um, so we have a lot of right point breaks. Um, that's what I've noticed. It's like, where would I surf? You definitely. Know? Yeah. It's like, the, I'd have to learn how to you know, surf regular. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> not, not even, it's like, you just learn how to go backside and there's yeah. opportunities to get other lefts around, you know, not to say that. And there's a lot of fun lefts around this area that can be, you know, pretty on when they're on. 
Um, I know there's one at all. I think there's only like a couple of left point breaks in our whole coast, though. Like yeah. it's kind of rare to find a left point break. I don't know. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit different. Yeah, it's just not the way the angles are lining up as much yeah. as you want them to. Sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Mark. That's all right. What do you, what do you, uh, what do you tell your kids when they're when they're uh, surfing goofy, when they're you know. Oh, I mean, like, as far as, like... They just have to learn how to go backside, I guess. No, nah, yeah, exactly. I mean, like, the, where we train, like, I mean, at least it's Ventura Point and that whole, you know, Ventura Point strip from, you know, the top of the fairgrounds all the way down the pier. There's, like, a, a really wide variety of waves that break through it. Like, yeah, it's a dominant right point break. Mm -hmm. But you have a lot of different lefts that break, too, and a couple different corners and different sections. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, where we practice, it's like you, you get opportunity. It's not like it's one type of wave the whole time. Um, and so that's something, you know, where it's like I make sure that we have a variety to get kids training on all types of waves you know we want to make sure they get practice and and i'll even switch up practice you know where we will we'll practice there for a little way a couple of weeks and then let's say we have a contest at a beach break and i'll be like okay hey we're switching up we're going to go this beach break and train in this you know harsher close out faster more aggressive wave um and so we kind of get at a variety of that which is um it's always good you know you got to get that variety and uh, diversity in surfing so do you have any kids uh, in your program that you think might turn pro or got potential to be pro? Yeah, definitely. Um, we definitely have a couple of, you know, up and comers right now that, you know, are in the youth category for sure. And then um, what's really cool actually is uh, a couple of kids that I first started working with actually at Minkos when, uh, when I was 16, 17, it was my first summer job. Um, and the kids that were there at that program, um, those a couple of those guys actually have made their path all the way up to what's almost like the professional league right now, which is called uh, the WQS series, and uh, it's called the WSL Challenger series. Challenger series. So, okay. so yeah. So some of our top guys that came from Ventura and Makos as little Groms when I first started working with them, and they put in a lot of hard work over the years, right? Right. Um, you know, and they trained with some top quality coaches as well. Um, but they picked up a couple of sponsors and did really well in their couple of events this year and, and uh, actually placed in the top seven, which um, top seven surfers from our North America division get to be brought on to what's called the WSL Challenger Series. The, the North America division. Yeah. So, so yeah. Like top seven in North America. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow. And that's, uh, so yeah, there's, you know, it's a wide range and like, you know, there's a couple other different areas and divisions and that they take a couple other surfers from for, uh, for men. And I think for the female, I think it's top uh, three or four that they take for the WQS. Um, but as far as our boys that made it, um, you know, I think Jabe finished off third in the ranking. And so shout out to J Jabe Sarkaki and Dimitri Poulos are some of our yeah, um, local stars. guys. Yeah, some of our local superstars that came from Mako Surf Camp back in the day. Um, and I'm, you know, proud to say that I contributed some of their, you know, their stoke and some of their frothing and their surfing skill sets. So, yeah, stoked on those boys. They're actually, uh, they just left for Australia two weeks ago. So, um, so they just got there, started getting their feet wet out there and some training and their contest, uh, is starting this Saturday. Oh, they and, are, they're on tour in Australia. Yeah. So, okay. uh, so the WQS W or sorry, the WSL challenger series is, um, is like the top tier of surfers worldwide that are trying to make it into the professional league, which is the WSL. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, X amount of people will be led on to the world tour of the professional WSL league that following year. Um, so this is the first event in Australia that's going to be hosted at the Challenger Series. It's a big deal for these boys. You know, they're in the big leagues now officially mm -hmm. um, surfing against, you know, really good professional surfers but but i have faith in them you know they've put in a lot of hard work and they worked their way up to this part of the, their stage in their surfing career and now it's time to show them how how they do it are know? there also pros in that challenger series that are trying to get in there oh yeah, yeah definitely yeah. Okay. I, pretty much every single person person in there is a professional surfer at that yeah, point yeah. they're just um, not at the top they're not yet. at the top of the top you know surfing against kelly slater per se but yeah, they're yeah. you know they might have in the past though you know, so it's and it's gotten really competitive on the contest series now of who gets to stay in, you know, the top, you know, rankings of, you know, that contest of league. And so for the WQS, uh, 
um, for these boys, they they have to do really well in this Challenger Series. And um, so first events this weekend in Australia kicking off um, right there at Snapper Rocks. It's like an iconic place. But, but yeah, they're going to be traveling the whole world. Um, you know, those boys are going to be going to, you know, I think South Africa. Um, they're going to be going to Portugal. I, uh, I think they're going to be doing an event in Fiji. Um, yeah. So how many, how many like stops are there on the tour? I can't, I can't uh, like a dozen, tell you off the top, you but yeah, I would say probably at least like, you know, probably 10 or so, okay. um, eight to 10, maybe 12, um, events. And, um, yeah, but really, you know, it's all on a point scale, you know, you get, you know, fifth place, you get this many points, you get first place, you get this many points. And at the end of the season, who has that, how many points, you know, that's considered how you get the rankings. Um, so, you know, we're wishing those guys the best of luck and, you know, really proud of them for how far they've gone. And even if they go down first round, first heat, you know, get last, I'm still proud of them. You know, they, they made it to a really big point in their surfing career and they have some big time sponsors backing them, you know, um, Jabe, who's one of our Ventura Makos coaches. Um, he, he's sponsored by Visla, Sexwax, um, Sunbum, Channel Island Surfboards, you know, some, some really good companies backing them. Mm-hmm. And then Dimitri, who, uh, who came from Ventura Makos when he was younger. Um, he's, you know, riding for Red Bull, which is some of the top elite riders in the world ride for Red Bull. Yeah. And uh, O'Neal, you know, O'Neal's a major surfboard and wetsuit brand. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's like they have some really good sponsors backing them, and we're stoked to see where they go. Um, and then, yeah, and then some of uh, one of our other female, you know, surfers that came from Ventura Makos and that same kind of era um, is McKenna Burke. And, um, and she's, uh, a major threat in the surf world. Um, she's, she's really good. Yeah. She actually won. I can't, I, I can't say if it was last year or the year before that, but she claimed, or actually, no, it was last year. She won it as a freshman. So she went to UCSD as a freshman mm-hmm. and got in there. Um, super smart girl, you know, young lady. She's a woman now, in my opinion. So she's, yeah, super smart woman. You know, she has a twin brother who kills it too. He doesn't go there, but um, great family. And um, and so she she actually won the college university uh, West, West Coast title in California. So she was state champ as a freshman. Wow. Um, coming out of UCSD for, for them. So that was really cool, you know, to see that. And even before that, she was winning almost every local event, every surf rodeo she was winning, you know, yeah. like anything you could imagine, she was just killing the game. And But she wanted to take her uh, education in serious and really focus on, you know, getting, um, getting her credentials all cranked out. So yeah, she's yeah. doing a great job of that, but also having a great job, uh, you know, having fun and keeping her surf career going. So, wow. yeah, those are kind of like some of our pride and joys. And yeah, you must be proud. Yeah. You know? you know, it's, it's cool to say that, you know, I've contributed to their, you know, surf career to a certain extent and at least was able to stoke them out and keep the fire going. Mm-hmm. So yeah, really stoked. Yeah. There's something very rewarding about coaching that you just don't get in other kind of jobs, you know, Mm -mm. it's, you know, it's, it's, you don't, you don't coach for the pay, you know, you coach for the experience and the way it feeds you, you know? It really is. You know, it's a really, you know, a humbling, you know, job and, it's just that, you know, some people think that, you know, there's people just trying to get your money out there, but that's not what we're about by any means. And I teach my staff and my workers and all that as well. You know, I, I tell them like, Hey, here just to make some money. And then this probably isn't the right job for you. Like we're kind of giving like life experiences of what yeah. we're doing and what we're offering. And I mean, especially when you're working with youth, you know, like we primarily work with youth, we do all ages. Um, but when you're working with kids and, you know, you're working with children day in and day out, and especially on a consistent basis and, you know, they, they look up to you to a certain expense, extent, you know, and, and they want to, you know, and they want to have, they have their dreams that they want to pursue. And so who, who are we to deny that? You know, I want to try to support that as much as I can and try to get you on that right path in that direction as, as, you know, as well as I can and support you in any way, shape or form. Know? Cause it's too easily to, it's too easy to just get distracted nowadays and be led down the wrong path, you know, and get into mischief and some wrong shenanigans, you know, it's yeah. nowadays it's way too easy access for all these kids, you know? Um, and the, and the kids have a hard time nowadays, dude, there's a lot of pressure on these kids. Yeah. Like it's way different than when I was a kid and when you were a kid, you know, and, and the generations above us, you know, like this whole phone game and, you know, the social yeah, media, like you're, there's eyes on you at any given moment, 
you know, and able to be one post away from being like, you know, the you know laughing stock of the whole 805, you know, yeah. or the whole nation for that, you know. Yeah, no thanks. So yeah, it's you know, like these poor kids, they they have so much pressure and you know all these stresses and burdens kind of putting on pushed on them at a younger age nowadays that you know they just need support and just need to learn how to be kids again realistically right. you know and just play and just play and have fun and it's like that's kind of like where i love to bring it but at the same time bring that professionalism in and say hey all right you know let's get serious now you guys got loosened up you got the jitters out you know we cracked a couple of jokes but let's get serious and start training you know we'll yeah. start running heats or hey let's do this drill you know whatever it is and then kind of start you know getting them really fine-tuned and and that step of progression and sequence of progression that we want to take them um because i mean in my opinion if you take a client that you're consistently working with and they are not making any pro progress then you're failing yeah. as a coach yeah you know and as an instructor like wh where you got to find that ticket and that recipe to make it worthwhile to where you're on the same page with that client or that participant or wh whomever you're working with and where you both can be in sync and understand each other to get to that next level, you know, and whether it's, you know, physically or even just mentally, you know, and a lot of the time it is just mentally. Yeah. It's just you know? a connection in their mind. You yeah. I love it. to just tell the kids, you know, like just break down that mental barrier that you put up, yeah. you know, and, and like, and it goes a long way, you know, and I love to just kind of put things and like and word it to where i'm talking about surfing but then you can kind of apply it to life as well yeah. you know and kind of like give these kids an outlet to express themselves and it's really cool because the way that i run my programs and the way i interact with my you know my kids and my clients it's like i you know i make i just get down to earth and get real with them you know i'm on a real level um, I love to be honest. I love to keep it real. I don't, you know, try to butter up anything or try to sell you on anything by any means. You know, mm -hmm. I'm just like, I want to be there to support you and help you and get you through whatever you need to get through and get you into that next phase of where you, you know, you could be, you know, and, and so it's, it's, you know, that's why I love to tell everyone. It's like, they're like, Oh, are you a professional surfer? It's like, no, I'm not a professional surfer, but I like to use the title, like a professional stoke therapist Yeah. where, you know, cause like what we do, it's, it is pretty therapeutic, you know, and, and surfing when you're out in the water, it's, it's something that, you know, it's one of the few things that you can say is indescribable. Mm. Um, you know, and like, you don't really see that with that many things out in the world where you can't really describe the feeling of what you're doing you know mm -hmm. um so to be able to have that and offer that it's uh, very special yeah yeah well sure. it's a, you know I, I think of it's like uh i i tell, tell my parents like the kids parents all the time like you know it's a privilege to be in the position of of a teacher or instructor absolutely you know you, you hear stories of public school teachers that you know don't care at all anymore but it's like i think of it as a, as a privilege to to share my perspective with kids absolutely minds, you, you know, know? And, and it's like you know there's i just like to keep it real and keep it true roots you know from what i've been raised on and what i know and and you know i keep all the education that i've learned throughout all my years in the ocean and with my surf history and my surf experience and mm -hmm. and that's all i want to do is i just want to educate kids on that you know and and try to strengthen them so they're aware and you know that's it's nothing to like you know that anybody should be denied uh, i mean we've been working on getting into the school districts here for you know a good while and we finally have which is very cool you know we're working and we're a registered vendor to be able you know work with kids as a pe class now yeah, so, you know, that's so, cool. yeah, yeah. so kids can, you know, now skip P at school and they register to do what's called ISP. Right. And they're doing ISP through us with surfing. You know? I just signed a form the other day. Yep. For soccer. So, yep. You know, so yeah. it's like, you know, you have like these kids that are doing independent study programs with you, you know, and then, um, you know, you have all these different other options and outlets that you can take them on, you know. So, yeah, it's it's really cool to be able to offer that to everybody for sure, you know. All right. Well, Christian, it's been a pleasure. Anything else you want to add before we wrap it up? 
Yeah, you know, I mean, um, just anybody. Where, where can we find you? Yeah, you can definitely find us uh, by just going to our website, VenturaMakeUsSurfCamp.com. And uh, we're happy to have you guys check it out. There's a bunch of content on there, you know, videos on YouTube and kind of give you some highlight reels of what we offer as far as camps and surf teams and all that kind of stuff. And then um, all the information, all the programs we offer. Uh, we also have an Instagram account. You can follow us, Ventura Make a Surf Camp. Um, we have a Facebook, you know, all the main social media handles. Um, but yeah, and any obviously you can go to any local surf shops, find our flyers, our business cards. You'll see those in there. Awesome. And um, yeah, we're stoked to get you guys out in the water whenever. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming out. Absolutely. Appreciate you having us.